Hi there, my name is Joanne Hasty, and I am a painter who uses a robotic arm in my fine art painting process and I've been documenting my process of developing code to paint with a robotic arm and this morning I was preparing surfaces to be painted as well as varnishing some paintings and I thought I would create a video of the, the products that I use and how I use them and around me I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten paintings that I was working on varnish and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven panels that I was preparing to be painted. Because I was doing all of this, I thought I'd um, share with you some of my processes. It's probably taken me about 12 years to figure out what varnishes I like. I'm keen to know if there's better products out there that you use, so feel free to share those. Or if you try these products and have some tips, please put them in the comments below. Basically the products I pick are acrylic based and the reason I like acrylic based is first I paint in acrylic so I'm familiar with them and I can mix them with the paints if I really wanted to but also secondly I can wash the brushes with soap and water. I have used oil based varnishes in the past and haven't been happy with the process and was just struggling to clean the brushes so I really like using acrylic based products. And another thing that I do with all of the products is I use a soft brush and the reason you use a soft bristle brush, so I have a larger one for when I'm doing the gesso and then I had a smaller one, let's see if I can find it, and I was using a smaller soft bristle brush when I was doing the, the varnish and the reason I use soft bristles is because then it doesn't leave any bristle marks on the, the painting before or after because I only want the paint itself to make those marks. So that said, the first thing I was doing was clear gesso and I was actually painting this large panel over here. Now, I have never painted anything this big with the robot and I wanted to try. Usually I put white gesso, white sandable gesso on my boards, but this one I used clear gesso and I did two coats. The reason being I really like that raw edge on the sides and I didn't want to have to tape off where the white starts and stops. So that's why I use clear gesso on this. And what gesso does is it seals the surface. That way your paint isn't absorbed by the wood. It seals it and prepares it for paint, but it also gives it a consistent tooth. And what tooth means, it's basically putting, it's almost putting the bristle marks or some roughness to the surface so it can actually accept paint and the paint sits on top of the gesso. I usually buy, when I buy canvas, it's already pre-gessoed or pre-prepared. And so I don't have to worry about gessoing. But I have had instances where I bought handmade paper and the paper completely absorbed the paint right through. So I've had, had to gesso paper as well. The other thing I like about gesso is sometimes I buy boards from different manufacturers. And so the smoothness of the panel or the different types of wood give a different consistency. So adding gesso actually makes it feel a little more consistency. So the clear gesso, I have the Liquitex brand. And I'll put all the links to the products down below. Seals, stiffens, and provides tooth, dries translucent, non-yellowing for acrylic oil, pastels, and other media. Apply to raw canvas, hardboard, paper, wood, and non-porous surfaces. So another reason I like this is because I did use this exact clear gesso on the paper. I didn't want the paper to have a color to it. And, it, and dry for 24 hours before using can tint with our acrylic color and that was one thing I said on the at the start that I like the fact that you can mix our acrylic paint with any of these products. Now the other one you'll see me doing with gesso so that's these smaller boards and because I end up mounting these and that's in another video I mount these to a different panel I don't mind the edges being covered with white because then I just have the painting go around the edges. I like this golden brand gesso because it's sandable. So I can add more layers and I can make it super smooth. But one thing with sandable gesso is you can only put it on hardboard or panel. The reason being it's very brittle and you'll notice that when you're using it, it's very thick. And I'm not sure if I said that about the clear gesso. When I was placing it onto the panel, the first layer was very thin and I think it was being absorbed into the wood and then the second layer I was able to go thicker. So I did two layers of the clear stuff. With the, the sandable gesso, I only do one layer and it comes on pretty thick. You can see that's it's quite white. 
And another thing about the white gesso is colors really pop on it. So that's another reason I often use white gesso. And the next thing that I want to share with you is the isolation coat. So right now, these days I'm using golden soft gel gloss and I do two parts soft gel and one part water and I mix it in this little vial and one downside of this vial is I need a brush that a smaller brush that can fit into this but I paint three layers of this on a finished painting so you'll see me doing that on this piece so this one currently has one isolation coat and it makes it very glossy and the reason you need an isolation coat before you go to varnish is that way the varnish doesn't get absorbed by the painting. And I do three coats because in the past I have done two coats and I missed a spot and because I use matte varnish, which we'll talk about a bit later, the matte varnish got absorbed into the painting and left white streaks. And so that's why I do use the isolation coat because I use matte varnish. On the matte varnish, it says that you could also do a gloss varnish coat, but I just use the isolation coat because I can also use the soft gel in other applications. So that's that one. And then, so the next one are the varnishes. So the varnishes is what comes after you've got the, the gesso coat, you've got your painting, you've got your isolation coat, and now you put the varnish and the varnish is there to protect the painting. And I have been using Liquitex matte varnish. And one thing about gloss and matte varnish is that both matte and gloss varnish are the same product, except matte varnish has extra particles. They are these tiny particles, I guess they're clear, but when they're on the surface, they roughen the surface. And that's what makes matte which is a non-glare surface. And it's a, my own personal preference that I prefer a matte finish. Because I'm doing hard edged abstracts at the moment, I really like how you can see the, the colors from all angles. The downside is because you're adding the, these particles into the matte varnish is it mutes the colors a little bit. And the reason I'm explaining that you can mix gloss and matte together or matte and gloss are the same is because then if you want a, a, a semi-gloss, you can mix these two together, but the matte is what is reducing the gloss, if that makes any sense. So if, you, if this is too matte for you, you can go add some gloss to it, but if you wanna make it glossy, you have to just use gloss. So it's this spectrum of the finish. Right now I am using solid matte. Just looking, what else I wanna to say to this? So the downside of using matte gloss is it reduces the colors or it de-intensifies the colors. So you want to put as few layers as possible. So what ends up happening is the isolation coat is made from gloss gel, so it's super glossy. You put this on top, you mute it, but you will have little flecks of gloss shining through. So you put on the second layer trying to cover those. So let me, sh I've only put one layer on so far. So this piece, I'm just going to move it around. You can see up in the top here, there's a little bit of glossiness in the brush stroke, so that will get be gotten rid of in the second coat. But this one actually had pr fairly good coverage. I can see some strokes down there. Basically two coats is good. If I have to, I will do three coats. But I really like how no matter what direction you're looking at it, except when it's bang on in the middle, you can really see the colors versus this piece that just has the isolation coat. How it's just, if you put studio lighting on it, it um, ends up being a little too much. So I really like the look of matte and I hopefully you can see why. That's just Walter in the background. I will go help him momentarily. But what else did I have to say about this? Oh, in all of these coats, so isolation coat as well as varnishes, you want to make sure that you shake it so it's mixed, especially when it's matte varnish because you want those particles to be consistently through, but you don't want to create bubbles. So try swirling. I often have it sitting upside down for a little while, but you don't want to create bubbles. The other thing I've noticed that's a little bit stressful is 
when I'm doing isolation coat or the matte varnish is sometimes I'll see cloudy areas and the trick is to let them dry completely. Do not go back with your brush because that's when you'll create brush marks or it'll end up staying cloudy because you're pushing through it. One other challenge I have when doing any type of clear coating, especially on the final uh, layers that go above the painting, so you're going to have three isolation coats and two varnish coats, that puts five clear coats on top of your painting, is dust because you will end up seeing any of the dust. So throughout the process, I'm constantly pulling dust off the brush. I am wiping the surface of the painting with my hand. I don't use a towel because I don't want any extra lint going. I have tried many processes in the past. I've tried vacuuming the room before I do this, but the best thing that, that works for me is wiping the surface with my fingers. I'm comfortable doing that because I paint in acrylics and acrylics create quite a stiff surface so I'm not worried about damaging anything. I could see that some paintings would have del delicate features that you can't just brush with your hand and then because I use a soft brush I can pull any pieces of dust off and I can push pieces of dust off with the brush and then wipe off the brush with my hand. So I know a lot of you might ask, why don't I do the varnish coats with the robot? It's because it's such a delicate process because I'm trying to reduce the dust in those layers and hopefully it ends up working. So that's pretty much everything and I can hear Walter wanting my help, part of trying to have a fine art painting practice and being a mother. In a video I'll be doing shortly, I will be trying to see if the robotic arm can do a 20 by 24. So I'm pretty excited about that video last night. I was checking if it can actually reach that far. So I'm excited about that project. So if you're interested in following along with my work, hit subscribe, hit like, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.